When did I start recording bands and when did I start digital audio designs? Um, I started recording bands in 1997, semi-professionally. Digital audio design started in 1999, 1998, the end of 1998. And I will say that Midwest Blue was probably the first band I recorded that was truly awesome. No, there was a couple before them, but they still had the best music. Truly, as time went on, I was able to get develop the stuff into a, a better final product and my best recordings were my very last ones. As far as like technically the best mixes, they might not have been the best songs or bands. Chris Green. I met Chris Green. Um, he was a neighborhood kid, and uh, he, I don't know, he might have been 15 or 14, and he, he wanted to help. So um, I, I had him help build the studio walls inside my home, and I bonded with him. I love the kid. He's such a good kid, and his parents were awesome. Um, but I always included him. You know, if I needed extra hand setting up cables, I would call, say, hey, Chris, you want to come over? I'll pay you 20 bucks, you know? And he was always the absorber of whatever. So um, that's how I met him. I think he's a wonderful person. How did I meet Midwest Blue or Sam Swanson or Aaron Krause or Scott Steele? Um, one of you guys called me, and I would have you come in for a tour, so I could show you what I got, show you some stuff that I've done, and uh, let you walk out with some finished CDs that other bands have done. Um, I don't think I ran into you somewhere, you know, I think you contacted me. So you blame yourself for that one, sir. We did that record in the summer, is my memory. Um, lots of fun. <clears throat> Young. A lot of talent. Um, there's something about Sam that, that hit me, like deep. I could sense the music was more than just surfacy. It was way in there. Um, the vocals, the stage presence. Uh, one of my memories of Sam Swanson is going to the Metro to see Midwest Blue, I believe. Didn't you guys play the Metro? And you guys blew me away. You were amazing. You were awesome. But I knew that before. That's what made me want to go and see you guys. And uh, to see you not in my little studio, but on a you know a pretty good sized stage was And you know that I'm a White Sox guy, and you made me like part by Wrigley Field. So think about what sacrifices I made to go and see that show. Tattoo Mike. Good guy, great drummer, man. Um, my memories were, no Craig, we, we don't need that much time. We only got, you know, very small amount of money and uh, 
no quick first takes everything's first takes um but i also remember the same deepness of the music um that's not the way i wanted to record them but it's not for me it's for you so i did what you asked um, I, I always wanted it to sound the maximum fullest, and sometimes um, that wasn't in the budget. And I would also probably be the guy that would keep going after you guys ran out of money and not ask for the money because I give a shit too. Um, that's my personality, but uh, the three of you guys were fun, intelligent, creative, um, good musicians. And that was quite a, many years ago, so I would like to see what's going on now. I'm not at all impressed with this semi solved equation that I'm facing while your lowest expectations adhere. Check the rhythm of your multiplication and then subtract me, cause that's what you did, so that's what you get. Make sure you think of me the next time that you're stuck. I have memories of the Phoenix Rising, I remember them being good. I remember the singer having a higher pitched voice, but I can't even put a face to it, and that's sad. That was done quickly, that recording. It was done quickly. Um, Color Blue, that was a very lengthy process. They were very picky. I like customers like that, or I liked customers like that. Um, but both of those groups were, weren't the surfacey fake Try to make money bands. They were trying to put what's in their soul onto a record, which is hard to do. It really is. You know, it's funny. A band will come in. They'll each guy will have a picture in his mind of their songs, even though they're all playing the same songs. But each guy has a different picture in his head or girl what it's supposed to be in the end. I always described my job at that time as my customers were painters, but my customers didn't have any arms. They would want to create a painting, but I would have to be the guy in the canvas going, oh, you want blue up there? And I, my goal would be not only to pick the blue you want, but to get the exact depth. So when I put it up there, the guy would be like, oh my God, that's Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. That was my goal. Didn't always work. Am I glad to be out of the industry? Partially yes and partially no. Um, partially yes and partially no. I got to expound on that that I can't. I miss part of it and I don't miss part of it. Um, I miss meeting musicians. They're, we're the coolest people there are. You know that. I know that. Um, everybody wants to be a musician if they're not one, but uh, it's a lot of crap that goes with it, man. You know how much money I put out on that gear? Over a hundred grand, and it's like, you know, with that kind of money, I could have been making a lot of money, not what I was making, so. Um, but life isn't about money. Life is about interacting and loving your fellow man. Thank you. Times I You've been taking me places I've never been. The nights